Module 214 of Basic Training, your poll button. <laughs> okay, we have a poll button up here at the top. It's, this is this thing is kind of tricky. I don't think it's intuitive. I have asked WizIQ to um, revisit how they set this up, but let's look at what we've got. Now, where is the teacher? We're looking at it right now. And there's a few that are already here. Let's see what Tammy set up. Let's let it... Well, first, let's edit the poll. Let's see what she did. Okay, here's the main question. We have up to 255 characters. We can add options. We can add another option if we want, but yes, a little bit, no. Simple. Okay, so back to the poll list. And publish means put it out there. Okay, so nothing has happened yet on our screen. We only have one student here. Let's go and look. Oh, something popped up on his... Did you find this fun English spot helpful? I can click yes. And now I have to hit submit. As a viewer, I can close that. But now let's go over here and look. Oh, look. We had one option. Now the reason I say this is not intuitive is because the first option was number at the top, not at the bottom. Option number three is now at the top. I don't like that, but we can look at the results because everybody answered or we created a time and we told it to end the poll. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go back here. It, you might be tired waiting, so you click. Well, no, you can't. If you click end poll, it shuts everything down. So you have to look at the results here and tell people. There's no way to show them what happens. It still has a way to go, but we can look at it as a pie chart. <laughs> that was kind of list view and who voted for what it's not quite there yet but it is kind of nice so we can end the poll and we're back here let's create one let's say I'm having I'm having three contestants um, uh, compete in a game vote for one of these now I like to leave it generic you you could do it on the fly and create this but I like to leave this in my different polls so um, contestant number one option number two let's say I have a, a three contestant game contestant number two and then I want to add another one for contestant number three contestant three all right so I've given them three choices I'm going to save the poll or I can save and publish. I may as well just go ahead and save and publish. Now I've created a choice. Let's see what the the students see. Vote for one of these. Contestant one, contestant two. All right, contestant one, the top choice, the first choice. Submit. And as I said before, it's not the top here; it's the bottom. And so that's how you do a poll. Um, I don't use this much, but when I do games, when I have many contestants. Uh, three contestants is all I normally bring in. I use it. Um, certainly, you can create some yes-no things to force people to vote um, so that they don't have to use the chat box. So a yes-no would be a good um, poll to leave in there. And then um, when we're done with that, we can end this poll. And we can go on to use more, create more, or finish it. Uh, I suggest you experiment and remember too that it does not publish to anybody so if you had a large group of people with um, that you would want to do you would let's see that again let's create an answer there's one thing you can do um, and then they're done so let's go over here let's end the poll whoops no we can't yeah we can no we can't end it remember if we end it then it shuts everything down. We want to look at the results in some way or another. Now, I use that Jing thing to do a screen capture, but you can also do a screen capture here if you wish and save that to your, which saves to your clipboard. So if it's in, and then you can save it wherever you want. All right, so that's it for the polling feature. And look, if we end the poll, then we lose all the information. So that button doesn't make sense either to me. But, it's better than nothing. We'll see you. Screen sharing is next. Oh, boy.